Welcome to Circa. In this Play Here episode, we will be talking about all the wonderful places to go and things to do with kids in L.A. Even without kids, these are still some pretty awesome things to do. And as always, don't worry, there's going to be notes on all the places mentioned in this guide in the Circa app. One easy subscription unlocks the world. So sit back, put on your headphones, and let me tell you about the playground that is Los Angeles. Let's have some fun. Serka, love the world you live in, and we'll help you explore it. Los Angeles is, as we know, the entertainment capital of the world and home to all of the artists that make Hollywood go round. Well, lots of those folks have families and kids and need excellent things to do to entertain them. These industry parents also occasionally need jobs themselves, which leads to some extraordinary talent dressed up as Disney princesses or teaching acting classes and leading horseback riding excursions. You should take advantage of all of this. The best way to experience Los Angeles is to both appreciate what you're doing, I mean, really take it in and enjoy it for what it is, even if it feels touristy on the surface, and then also to appreciate the people that bring these moments to life. Now, you could spend a week in Los Angeles at the beach, under endless blue skies. Awesome, right? But maybe you've come to L.A. for a bit more. In many ways, this city is actually perfect for families. Because, like your kids, Los Angeles rises early and loves to spend time outdoors. Traveling by car makes hauling kids and all their gear infinitely easier than navigating public transportation. L.A. is a place that needs a bit of planning. The city is sprawling, filled with attractions, and you don't want to be driving clear across town in rush hour. No one will be happy about that. So we're going to organize this guide as plans for each day of the week. These things can be mixed and matched, but this will give you a feeling for how the city is organized and how long you might want to spend doing any one thing. And for the most part, everything here is for kids of all ages, adult kids included. First, here are a couple of suggestions. Feel free to take your children to almost any restaurant. Plenty of restaurants have kids' menus or will create kid-sized portions. Just ask. But use your judgment, obviously, the more expensive the restaurant or the harder it is to get a reservation, you know, the less enthusiastic they're going to be about serving little kids. If your children are well-behaved, you can take them nearly anywhere, and you should. A few more rules about handling kids in LA. Number one, hire babysitters, sure, but don't ask a random stranger to watch your toddler while you pop into a nearby Starbucks. Number two, Don't take the little one shopping on Rodeo Drive. The Lux shops aren't going to be thrilled with fingerprints on their glass cases and haute couture fabrics. Number three, pack layers and bathing suits. You never know when you're going to happen upon an unmissable splash pad or sit down for a chilly outdoor dinner. Both of these can easily happen in the same day. Number four, For all of you Scandinavians, please don't leave the baby in the stroller outside the cafe. Los Angeles is a metropolis. There are movie theaters, trampoline parks, bowling alleys, mini golf, and green spaces of all types and sizes, and you should hunt them out. There are hundreds of them, but in this episode, we're going to talk about the things you can only do here. These are the things that are going to matter most to your kids, like spotting their favorite YouTubers and TikTokers, because plenty of them live right here in Hollywood. Sunday. For your first day in the City of Angels, we're going to start classically with a day at the beach in Santa Monica. 
It's Sunday, so hit the wonderful Santa Monica Farmer's Market for breakfast. The market is also open Wednesday. Grab some local fruit to snack on during the day. Apples through the winter, apricots in the spring, plums and pluots through the summer and into the fall, oranges of all kinds year-round. Then, off you go. Use your fresh morning energy for the activities that will need it most. Now, you can do these things all year round, but in winter, you'll probably want to rent a wetsuit. You know, especially if you're getting in the water. Surfing came to California from Hawaii around the turn of the 20th century. It was imported by Henry Huntington, a railroad tycoon, and was actually first introduced in Redondo Beach, a community in what is now the South Bay, Los Angeles. Back then, a longboard weighed around 200 pounds. Thankfully, surfing has come a long way. Every summer in Huntington Beach, the week-long U.S. Open of surfing is held. It's the largest surfing competition in the world. Plus, it's a qualifying contest for the World Surf League, and it attracts some of the best riders from all over the world. If you want to try surfing for yourself, hire an instructor or join a group lesson. There are surf schools up and down Santa Monica and Venice Beach but make a reservation to ensure you have a spot, especially in the summertime. Through the less busy months, group lessons might be a little more limited, but you'll always find something on the weekends. Kids as young as four can learn to ride waves here. Paddleboarding is also really popular along the coast. There are lots of options for lessons, and most of these places will also offer paddleboarding tours where you can take in the sights along the coast. You may catch a glimpse of sea lions in the morning or dolphins at sunset. For lessons, there generally aren't age limits. As long as you can stand, you can learn. If your kids can't handle their own board, they can usually ride on yours, or even better, the instructors. Tours, however, are usually for older kids, so double check before you book. If you want to stay a little drier, maybe try kayaking. Marina del Rey, just south of Venice, has many places where you can rent, tour, and explore the coast in a little boat with a paddle. Age requirements differ, but younger kids can often ride in a tandem kayak with an adult. And some places even let you bring your dog. Whatever you choose, it's nice to get out early and make this the top half of your day. After all of this, you'll need lunch. Now this is a great day for tacos. If you're in Venice, go for Tacos Por Favor or Teddy's. Teddy's serves only red beef birria in several forms. It's delicious and you can eat them while watching the action on the Venice boardwalk. In Santa Monica, try Linnea. It's slightly more expensive, as Santa Monica usually is, but it has an excellent menu, including vegan options. And while the kids have a lemonade and loaded nachos, you can indulge in a Sunday afternoon Oaxacan mule with mezcal and ginger. After lunch, head back to the beach in Santa Monica and pick up a bike rental. There are a half a dozen places, but we like Joyride for their $10 an hour beach cruisers. They'll give you a helmet and a lock as well. Just check the link in the notes and be aware that in the summer, especially on a weekend, they will sell out. So the smart move is to reserve your bike ahead of time. Then spend as long as you like riding the beach path as the afternoon drags slowly and wonderfully on. Return your bike at sunset and end your day on the iconic Santa Monica Pier. There will be buskers and hawkers all over the pier and surfers underneath trying to catch that last wave of the day. Ride the Ferris wheel, because why not? And marvel at the lights up and down the coast. Eat cheap food on the boardwalk. Or, if you fancy, try one of the restaurants a block away on Main Street, if you're willing to change clothes and make reservations. Sunday evenings are quiet as the city prepares for the work week to come. So, be quiet too and prepare yourself for an epic week of fun. Monday. Pack that sunscreen and prep for a day outside, because we're going to one of LA's pride and joy outdoor spaces, Griffith Park. 
This is one of the largest urban parks in the United States. It holds a massive amount of things to do. You'll never see it all in a day, and that's fine. In 1882, Griffith J. Griffiths purchased a large plot of land on the eastern side of Los Angeles and started an ostrich farm. Ostrich feathers were a big deal in those days. You can picture them on fancy ladies' hats, right? Griffith made the most of his money in real estate and left a lot of it in a trust for the development of the park. These funds helped build an amphitheater, the Greek, in 1930, nestled into the forest. It's a picturesque and intimate venue, and it feels like you're out in the woods at a campfire sing-along with Alicia Keys. A few years later in 1935, the famous observatory opened its doors and the park steadily grew in size over the years. Inside, you'll find a whole host of animal life, some wild and some not. Look out for crossing coyotes. Start the day at the LA Zoo. You could spend a whole day here, but you don't need to. Half a day will do, and we'll show you the highlights of more than 200 species living here, including elephants and giraffes, jaguars and alligators. Ask a keeper which animals are being fed that day. If for some very unusual reason your children are not into animals, you can spend a wonderful morning hiking the miles of trails in Griffith Park. There are 53 miles of trails, many of them kid-friendly, and yes, you should keep an eye out for rattlesnakes, just in case. South from the zoo, you can visit the Griffith Park merry-go-round, 65 horses strong. And right next to that, Shane's Inspiration, two acres of playground, sand pits, climbing walls, and green field. For sure by now you'll all need lunch. The park has dozens of wonderful picnic locations, but if you haven't packed anything to eat, you can head to the south end of the park and visit the Trails Cafe. Or you can head a few blocks south into Los Feliz Village for the Mustard Seed Cafe or Little Dom's, an Italian institution that Angelinos just love. Order delicious breakfast creations until 4 p.m. or a fried oyster sandwich or a meatball hero. Eat there on a white linen tablecloth or take it back to the park. After lunch, take the little kids to Travel Town to ride the trains and the ponies next door. Travel Town is open every day but Wednesday, and it's mostly an outdoor museum dedicated to locomotives. See train cars and engines from over 200 years of railroad history. It's thoroughly charming, and it's entirely free, although they will happily accept donations, and there is, of course, a gift shop. Everyone loves trains, but if you have older kids who want to ride proper size horses, hop over to Sunset Ranch on the Hollywood side of Griffith Park and ride horses along the Griffith Park trails. Get spectacular views of the city and the Hollywood sign. And no matter what you do, save time for the observatory. Break out your best James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause, one of several famous movies that used the observatory as a set. It also holds a sizzling Tesla coil and a great planetarium for star shows that kids of all ages will enjoy. If you're visiting the observatory on a Saturday, you might be there for a star party. Dozens of amateur astronomers bring out their telescopes, many of which are very large and impressive, and share them with anyone who wants to take a look. There'll be a food truck or two parked nearby, but the pro move is to pack a picnic and enjoy this premier sunset location before the party starts. There's one star party a month, so check the observatory's website for the calendar of events. There's a link in our notes. If you're coming on the weekend, the parking at the observatory can be a bit of a nightmare. Pack your patience and be prepared to walk uphill for a bit. Second and third, one out. Correct. If there isn't a star party and the team is in town, get tickets to a Dodgers game. Dodgers Stadium is just outside Griffith Park. It opened its doors in 1962, a few years after the Dodgers moved from Brooklyn, and has since become one of baseball's hallowed ballparks. Cheap seats are under 30 bucks, and for most of the regular season games, you can get them at last minute. 
buy the stadium's signature Dodger dog, and root for whoever you like. Los Angeles fans are really quite tolerant, as so many people who live here aren't actually from here. However, we do love our Dodgers, especially come playoff time. Hey, just a reminder, you can find a rundown of all the places and links you need from this episode in the Circa app. Tuesday. Tuesday is the day for museums of all kinds. Check out the Natural History Museum, the California Science Center, and the California African American Museum. The Science Center has an IMAX screen and a show-stopping exhibit, the Endeavour Space Shuttle. At the Natural History Museum next door, get tickets for the Butterfly Pavilion or the Spider Pavilion, depending on the time of year. Walk through a room full of fluttering butterflies. It's great fun. If you're on the west side of LA, visit the Getty Center. There's a family room loaded with art and sculpture for kids, plus beautiful gardens to explore outside, and a rotating calendar of kids' workshops and live outdoor music. An offshoot of the Natural History Museum, but not as far west as the Getty, is the La Brea Tar Pits. I love this place, it's really cool. This is an active dig site, and sometimes you can see archaeological work going on. Also, there's always a fruit cart, marked by a rainbow-colored umbrella on the corner when you enter the tar pits, so get a healthy and delicious container of sliced fruit. Watermelon, jicama, orange, mango, and more, topped with lime, salt, and the pro move, a shake of slightly spicy tahini. Post-museum, and especially if you're at the Tar Pits, take a quick ride to The Grove and Original Farmer's Market. The Grove is an outdoor shopping mall that looks a little bit like a theme park. It even has an old-fashioned trolley that you can hitch a ride on. And there are several kid-themed shops, including a Willy Wonka-esque candy shop. There are some great pricey restaurants at The Grove, but for our money and a real LA experience, walk through the mall to the Farmer's Market. This was one of LA's first farmer's markets. It's over 100 years old. It's now full of little restaurants and food stalls and souvenir shops with everything from oysters and French cheese to kosher hot dogs, New York pizza, Brazilian churrasco, fried chicken, tacos, ice cream, and donuts. It's wonderfully casual, and everyone can order from a different place, so there's no need to argue about what's for dinner. End your evening early, because tomorrow you're going to need to rise with the sun. Wednesday. One thing L.A. has that almost nowhere else can boast is an epic array of theme parks. There's something for everyone here, for kids of all ages, and some are better than others, depending on where your sweet spot is for rides. One thing nearly everyone here agrees on, Disneyland is for everyone. Don't be a grouch, there's nothing else like it. First, a few pieces of theme park advice. One, Leave much earlier than you think you need to. Seriously. There could easily be traffic on the roads because, let's face it, it's Los Angeles. And depending on the park, it can take an hour to get from the parking garage through security and then inside to the front gate. For real. Two, book your tickets early, online. And if it's Disney, book days or weeks in advance and keep your tickets on your phone. Three, pack a sweatshirt, maybe even extra socks, and if you have little ones who are sensitive to cold, pants as well. Four, bring a water bottle. Our advice is to accept the situation you're in and buy your meals inside the park, but be aware, it'll be pricey. And don't pack a selfie stick. Most parks don't allow them, and you kind of look ridiculous anyway. Ask someone to take your photo. Everyone will, especially park employees. Okay, now for a rundown of the parks, we're going to keep this to the basics. Do as much or little research as you want before you go, but just make sure you get there early. Disneyland, the holiest of all theme parks, opened in 1955. 
It was the first in the Disney empire. Its companion, California Adventure, opened in 2001. The various signature Disney attractions are split between the two parks, but some of the original rides that first opened in 55 are still operating in Disneyland. These include the Mad Hatter's Teacups, Peter Pan's Flight, the Carousel, and Tomorrowland's Autopia. Peter Pan still draws long lines, so that's a good ride to hit first thing. If you want to ride Splash Mountain, do it early in the day, before midday heat, when it'll be the most popular and the wait will be the longest. And definitely before evening, because if you get wet, and you probably will, you don't want to be walking around with wet clothes after the sun goes down. Trust me, I've done it. You can now pre-order meals via the Disneyland app so you don't have to wait in long lines. Take advantage of this and make the most of your time. Similarly, the Disney Genie Plus app is designed to give you the best itinerary based on wait times. And for an additional fee, you'll get access to the Lightning Lanes, Disney's replacement for the old FastPass system to help you skip some of the long lines. We'll link to the app in the notes. Lastly, you might be able to trick your kids or your in-laws into riding Space Mountain, the indoor pitch black roller coaster, because they won't be able to see what they're agreeing to do. Just know that they may never forgive you. I speak from experience. Universal Studios is perched on the hills overlooking Burbank on the San Fernando Valley side of the city. The Universal backlot is really cool. It's an active group of sound stages hosting various TV shows and working sets, as well as sets from previously built but well-known films, like the Courthouse Square from Back to the Future, the Bates Motel, and a destroyed street complete with a crashed 747 from War of the Worlds. The rides at Universal almost all involve the use of screens and 3D glasses to create the impression of dramatic, story-filled, high-speed adventure with everyone from the Transformers to the Minions. They're brilliant rides, but can be tough on you if you're given to motion sickness. So, pack the drama, mean. Universal is worth it, though, for Harry Potter World alone. Go ahead, buy the too expensive butterbeer and pumpkin pie flavored juice, and prepare to spend a small fortune on replica magic wands. Expelliarmus. Knott's Berry Farm is home to the Peanuts Gang. It's an excellent choice for a park with slightly less expensive tickets, which delivers rides for all ages from little ones to teenagers, including several really nice roller coasters. The Timber Mountain Log Ride was one of the original Knott's rides and is said to be the inspiration for Disney's Splash Mountain. So the same rule applies, pack extra socks. In 1923, Walter Knott opened a roadside stand to sell the berries from his farm. A few years later, the family opened a permanent market, a tea shop, and a nursery. In 1934, after surviving the Great Depression, Walter's wife Cordelia introduced a fried chicken dinner in the tea room, and it exploded in popularity. You can still buy this legendary fried chicken at the restaurant at the park's entrance. To occupy all the folks that showed up and waited for hours in line for fried chicken and biscuits and gravy and berry pie, Walter built a faux western ghost town and added attractions like music and panning for gold. In 1960, the first ride opened, the Calico Mine Ride. And it's still there today. We have two more theme parks to recommend. Legoland is a bit better for the younger kiddos, and Six Flags is geared more for older thrill seekers. Legoland is going to be a bit of a hike. It's actually closer to San Diego than LA, but it's possible to do it in a day with good planning. Six Flags is north of the city and loaded with more roller coasters and after dark events and fewer fuzzy animal characters. No matter what you choose and what time of year it is, pack your sunscreen, your walking shoes, and your patience. Thursday. 
Today is for Hollywood. Maybe you've already done the Hollywood Boulevard Walk of Fame stop on your L.A. tour. Now, let's be honest, it's crowded and it can be blisteringly hot in the summertime. But it's also one of those Hollywood things to see, so it's up to you. The L.A. Start Here episode in this guide has some tips. Our tip with kids is to instead visit the Academy Museum for Hollywood History. It's relatively new and loaded with costumes and props and unique film exhibits. Go see E.T., R2-D2, The Warriors of Wakanda, the original shark Bruce from Jaws, and Dorothy's Ruby Slippers. You can also stand on the Academy Awards stage and receive your very own Oscar statue. Kids under 17 are free, but the Oscar experience requires the purchase of a special ticket. Then, of course, you're going to want to see the places where all the pictures you just saw were shot. So while in L.A., absolutely take a studio tour. These lots are like nothing else in the world, even though the whole world will recognize them. On the Warner Brothers tour, you'll ride through the sprawling back lot of stages, take pictures on the central perk set from Friends or with a broom from Harry Potter. Partly because of the size of the lot, which is on the valley side of the Hollywood Hills, this is the longest of all the tours. You can also tour one of Hollywood's oldest lots in its original location at Paramount Studios. You'll recognize the famous New York backlot set from any number of films from Breakfast at Tiffany's to Cloverfield. And if you like, next door to Paramount is the famous Hollywood Forever Cemetery, loaded with mausoleums of the stars. Wander around and pay your respects. It sounds creepy, I know, but it's really quite pretty. You could also spend a couple of hours on the Sony lot in downtown Culver City, which is a neighborhood that was built up around what was once the MGM studio. Culver City streets are loaded with great restaurants and bars for after your tour, which showcases props from Spider-Man and Talladega Nights, as well as the soundstage for Jeopardy. Early on, The Wizard of Oz was filmed here when it was the MGM lot, and although there isn't much left to see from this classic, you can still walk the path that used to be the Yellow Brick Road. The neighboring Culver Hotel was used to house cast members during filming, and for years there have been rumors of the debauchery that ensued. The actors that played the Munchkins stayed here, about 120 of them, and depending on who you believe, it was quite a wild time. Many of them had never seen another little person before coming to Hollywood. And, well, you can look up those stories for yourself. The hotel is also apparently haunted. Of course. By the way, if you happen to be in Los Angeles for Halloween, one of the best neighborhoods for trick-or-treating is in and around the Culver City streets near the studio. Like I said, L.A. is full of the people that make the movies, and lots of these people end up living near the studios. So when the opportunity presents to turn your home into a set, complete with animatronics, special effects lighting, and extravagantly costumed extras, you can imagine what some of these houses become. Tonight, as you've spent the day exploring Hollywood, it's the perfect time for a show. Los Angeles was built around the world of moving pictures and then television, but some of the best actors have also practiced their craft on L.A.'s stages. The Second City Theater has branches in Chicago and Toronto and has seen some of the world's funniest performers grace the stage for improv nights. Nearly all of Saturday Night Live's cast members have performed here at some point. For more traditional theater, visit the Pasadena Playhouse or the Geffen, both dedicated to incubating new shows and new talent. Or the Wallace Center in Beverly Hills, which often showcases dance as well as independent films. Check the websites, but all of these theaters often host family-friendly shows. And for live music, there's no better venue in LA, or even on the West Coast, than the Hollywood Bowl and the Greek. The Hollywood Bowl hosts a number of sing-alongs and screenings of movies like Harry Potter and Star Wars, while the LA Philharmonic plays the score live. If you're in town for the once-a-year Sound of Music sing-along, you should go. 
even if you don't know the film, it's become an LA event where people come in costume with props and prepared to respond in unison to famous moments in the film. And as the singing echoes around the surrounding open air landscape, the hills really are alive with the sound of music. Friday. Friday is your morning to splurge on breakfast heading into the weekend. Enjoy some of the best places without the crush of weekend brunch goers, which is a very serious pastime in LA. Today we're getting your family out of the city to enjoy some fresh air and easy access to some of SoCal's best camping. First, you need some gear. Rent a tent and all the necessary equipment at REI and Burbank. Call to reserve, especially over the summer months. Or with a little planning, use Kitlender. They'll ship your gear to you and you ship it back. Camp at Thornhill Broom Beach just up the coast, 30 minutes from Santa Monica, and sleep soundly on the sand, feet from the waves. Let the kids play all day in the water and then build a big campfire to stay warm while you eat your hot dogs. Not far from Thornhill is another great campground with easy beach access. Leo Carrillo Campground is perfect for kids. It's well-contained and easy to wander and a short walk to the Leo Carrillo State Beach. Fair warning though, these campgrounds tend to sell out, especially for weekends over the summer. So if you know this is something you wanna do, be sure to make a reservation early, weeks or even months in advance. And if these don't work out, Los Angeles is loaded with places to get out and sleep in nature. We'll put a link in the notes for where to book campsites. If you don't wanna mess with a tent, and let's be honest, tent camping isn't for everyone, LA is a pretty good place to glamp up your camping experience. We recommend heading up the Pacific Coast Highway about 90 minutes just past the city of Santa Barbara to El Capitan Campground, where you can rent a fully outfitted yurt or a small cabin along a trickling stream. The campground has a well-stocked store with a little deli and coffee in the morning. Listen to owls hooting and coyotes howling in the darkness of night. Don't worry, coyotes aren't going to bother you at your campsite. That'll be the bears. Saturday. When you get up in the morning, have a chilly breakfast. Alfresco mornings are usually cool in LA no matter what time of year, so pack layers for camping. Then head out for a day in one of two cities north of Los Angeles, Santa Barbara on the coast or Solvang deep in wine country. Santa Barbara is a picturesque town with a beautiful bay and wonderful stretch of downtown loaded with cute shops and restaurants. Santa Barbara has an art museum, a history museum, and a maritime museum, but we'd send you to the Old Mission, which dates to the Spanish colonization in the 1780s. If your kids like wheels, rent bikes or a four-wheel Surrey cycle from Wheel Fun and ride along the coast and the quaint Santa Barbara streets. Hit Stern's Pier for clam chowder at the Santa Barbara Shellfish Company and McConnell's for ice cream at the original location of the SoCal Institution. There are loads of fantastic dining options in Santa Barbara, but for the best of them, make your reservations ahead of time, especially if you're there on a weekend. If you love wine, vineyards, nature, and wooden shoes, Skip past Santa Barbara and head inland to Solvang, a town founded by Danish immigrants in the early 1900s. To preserve their heritage, they built a Danish school, church, windmills, shops, and restaurants. I'll be honest, it looks a bit like an amusement park, but with a lot more wine. And yes, the wine. If you've come to Solvang, you're in the heart of the Santa Ynez wine region. Pick up a map in town. Yes, a hard copy map. They're free at the visitor center. 
and drive out of town on Alamo Pintado Road and within minutes find yourself surrounded by really gorgeous vineyards. They almost all have tasting rooms, so stop in and examine some local whites, reds, and rosés of all kinds. It's perfectly okay to pay a few bucks for a tasting and not buy any bottles, but if you find something you like, these lovely small vineyard bottles make excellent gifts. Meanwhile, your kids can play outside on manicured lawns and rustic fields. Check out Buttonwood Farm and Shoestring Winery. The people who work at these tasting rooms love to talk about the wines, so ask questions and don't worry if you don't know the etiquette, they'll be happy to talk you through. Just don't overdo it or you won't be able to drive home. And it's not all wine as you wander around the region. You'll pass through a couple of tiny town centers like Los Olivos, which has adorable shops and small art galleries to peruse. Also, plenty of small farms with stands selling apples, honey, jam, lavender, and more. And just outside Solvang is ostrich land, more than 100 ostriches that you can feed, and if you like, buy some feathers for your fancy ladies' hats. Stay the night here in wine country or brave the three-hour drive back to Los Angeles. The only advantage being that evening traffic will be light. Your kids will fall asleep peacefully in the back seat and the moonlight reflecting off the ocean as you drive the Pacific Coast Highway into LA will be spectacular. One final note. LA can be surprising. And everyone here has their own favorite things for kids, so ask the people you meet. Check out the LA Eat Here episode in this guide for lots of ways to taste the wonderful flavors of this city, all of which your kids should definitely try. And before I forget, those YouTubers and TikTokers that your kids follow, the ones with ambitions for a career in showbiz, likely live in Los Angeles, and they have to do all the same things everyone else does, like go to the grocery stores. So, some of the best places to play paparazzi are the Whole Foods and Erewhon markets in Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, and Silver Lake. Also, the hiking trails. Runyon Canyon Trail, which is a steep climb up the hill from the base of Hollywood, is a classic workout spot, and many a star has climbed those steps. Lastly, let fun pop. We've just covered seven possible days full of the best things to do with your kids. But one of the great things about this city is that there are always fun new things popping up. Whether it be an ice cream museum made for Instagramming or an ice skating rink three blocks from Santa Monica Beach, leave some space open in your itinerary to slot in something that just pops up. Thanks for listening to our Play Here in L.A. episode. You could spend a week on the beach, but you could also do so, so much more. And even with your kids, you can get deep into L.A. and have a truly authentic experience of the city that any local would envy. No matter when you're heading to La La Land, you'll get instant access to the full guide plus new episodes on a regular basis when you subscribe to Serca. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or download the Circa app, where you can also get pictures and maps and notes for everything in this episode and more. Maybe you'll want to sample our guides from Rome, London, New York, Barcelona, and many more to come. Circa. Love the world you live in, and we'll help you explore it.